As you can see by the title, I bought a film camera. Now this is my second film camera that I bought. Uh, the first one, it's still sitting up there. I just got batteries for it, so I'm ready to shoot with it. But the first one, I kind of got lazy and I didn't end up getting anything for it, any film or anything. But anyway, I found this camera on Marketplace and it is the FTB QL, Canon FTB QL. It's a pretty camera. Now this camera has some pretty nice little quirks, has a quick loading feature. Uh, which is what the QL stands for. We have a timer here, which is quite nice. And I, ha I paired it up with the 28 millimeter F2.8 by Sigma. I didn't know Sigma's, Sigma made lenses this old, so yep. So in this video, you'll see my first two rolls of film. Um, not very good, which is expected, which is fine. First two rolls really was just me making sure the camera even works which it does and it does well. So I finally got some rolls of film. What I did end up settling on is Kodak Ultra Max or Ultra Poor 400. Um, Ultra Poor because it's the cheapest I could find. What the fuck? There's so many packing peanuts for this shit. It's literally three rolls of film. Why do I need, why do I need that shit? And also it's 24 exposures. So it's not the 36. Um, I didn't want to go balls to the walls with my first film stock, but I got a three pack of those. And uh, my first experience after watching YouTube videos and stuff is knowing how to load the camera, obviously. What I do know is when you load it, you have to like advance it and take a couple photos a couple times. So in order to get the film onto the first frame. However, in tutorials that I was watching, they were talking about the spool actually moving or spindle, I don't know what it's actually called. And it wasn't rotating at this point. So I'll explain what's going on here. Thank you voiceover me for filling in. Basically, this is meant to spin. Yeah, good good focus, Mr. R6. This is meant to spin. Hello. This is meant to spin when you cock it, obviously. If you know how film cameras work, that's how it is, right? Um, but it's not doing that. However, it is taking the film and taking photos because when I wound it back, it actually wound back and there was quite a lot of film in there. Um, also the little film reader up the top here, um, it doesn't seem to be actually telling me if I got film. I really don't know if I'm doing this wrong. Like this is an example, one of the tutorials I have saved. So this is what it's meant to do. See the little wheel? It's meant to spin like that. If you didn't know anything about film cameras. Um, but unfortunately mine, unfortunately mine doesn't do that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm lost for words. If this works, then cool. But I probably have about six, six photos of just nothing and probably exposed to the light. So it's probably fucked, but I don't know. We'll see how we go. And I was very confused about it. So of course, pop the back open to see what was happening. And I, I knew that it would expose it, but I was like, I don't know what's happening with this thing. So I'm cranking it, I'm cranking it, taking the photos. And I was like, I don't think it's working that well. So obviously the first frames look like this. Yeah, they're completely exposed to the elements, but that's okay. I knew that was gonna happen, but I did eventually realize that it was actually spinning. It was just very slowly spinning compared to videos that I was seeing of other people advancing it. So on the first day, as you can see, the this is like this rainbow and I don't know, it's kind of epic. It, it was about three days after I loaded the film. It was the first time I could actually get out and shoot um, with some light. And unfortunately it was raining. So I had a very, very brief period of time. I did shoot two photos um, of this rain, uh, incorporating this rainbow in some way. So unfortunately, one of the shots from when I loaded it, one of the test shots that actually worked, for some reason it didn't crank correctly. I don't know was if it was because I was tampering with the, the film itself, I really don't know. So this is what it looks like. And as you can see in on the right side, you can just see the rainbow and the little composition I had. So there's like half of that frame. And on the left side, you can see the other composition I had of the rainbow. I had like the rainbow coming out of one of the bollards, which I thought was gonna look cool. And it seemed like it was all exposed right and everything. But unfortunately I had three photos on one shot. Don't know what happened there. 
Anyway, so I went over to the other side of the shopping center and I kind of just seen all these yellow lines and all that sort of stuff. So I thought, oh, maybe we can shoot that. Having a 28 mil was pretty wide. So it was kind of hard to compose a few things. Um, I'm thinking of getting the 50 mil, the 50 mil F1.8, just because that just seems more versatile for me. But anyway, I seen this, uh, these, like these yellow lines and everything, <laughs> the guy getting out of the car, uh, as I was taking that video, that was kind of awkward. Um, but I took these two photos. And they were hot garbage. Yep. It's really hard to take photos and not review them. So, which is kind of why I wanted to do film photography, just to stuff around. Now I did spot this other composition, which wasn't that good. It was just a reflection. And I literally just wanted to take a photo or something. So I took this photo, not that flash. Now I did end up coming back to that composition I had before with the, the rainbow. And I just felt like taking, um, this photo, but I overexposed it and I realized I overexposed it. So I took the next photo and it was fine. It was okay, but there was nothing really of substance in the shot. So yeah, that's all right. Dud photo, whatever. Now moving on, we, I went to Surface Paradise to do some street photography and I was manning both the FTB QL and the Canon R6 because I was going to do some normal street photography that I normally do. And I didn't want to obviously take the film camera out and do that just because I'm not really, I don't really know how I stand with shooting film just yet. And I don't want to burn too much film off basically. However, I did take a lot of photos. So, well, not a lot of photos, but more than I thought I would. So obviously you can see there's this composition here and it looks quite pretty and I, I like it. And I think it would have, I had a thing in mind thinking it would definitely work with uh, a film type of shot um, and it's the kind of thing that I've been wanting to do with film is just doing still life and very very still sort of scenes not too much moving not too much craziness so yeah, I've seen the scene I lined it up and I took a couple of photos here which were pretty nice and I actually like how they turned out also a lot of these photos that I've taken are adjusted very slightly in Lightroom, only exposure. I've just pretty much just adjusted the blacks and the highlights. That's all I've really touched in these and probably cropped a couple of them very slightly, um, but most of them came out pretty good out of the camera. And that's kind of how I wanted to have my film photos looking anyway. I think this light is dying. <laughs> it's so dark now. <laughs> Anyway, we'll continue on. Now I was trying to do some street stuff and I shot this photo. Didn't really end up good. Didn't have the dynamic range as my camera, of course. Well, I mean, it does have a dynamic range, but there's not really much adjustability after you take the photo. So I don't really like it. It's just a photo. Now I tried to line the seagull up as well. And unfortunately he took off right as I went to shoot. So I kind of moved with him. Kind of fascinated to see that it kind of still got in, but at the same time, it's not that good of a photo. So I'm out, I've made my way over to these line bikes. They're all lined up there. I might as well take a photo of them, I guess. Man, this is dying. Stop dying. All right, so I turned that light on. Um, it's not really how I want it to look, but whatever. We're gonna, I'm gonna make this video. Now I did try and take one of these shots where I've taken before digitally. Um, however, I didn't really like it. And also, as you can see on the right hand side there, there must've been some issues with scanning. Um, I think this was one of my last shots too. So not really sure. Anyway, I had to reload and put another roll of ultra pro in there. Of course, I spun it too far back and sent the film straight into the canister without any tab sticking out. So. I mean, I guess that's part of um, the fun. I do have to work on my technique with loading film though, because I feel like I'm very, even with the quick loading feature, I'm still very shit at it. So it's probably a good thing that I got this camera. So we loaded it up and here's the first shot of the R6. First of the roll, we always like a bit of this thing on the side. I don't know what this is called. I'm not gonna lie. Is that a light leak? That's not a light leak, is it? Then we move on to this particular 
um, this scene here, I did take a photo of it with my digital camera and I really liked it, how it looked on the R6. Um, however, this is where I did come to notice that when the sun hits the lens, it flares like crazy and it loses a lot of contrast. So that's where this photo comes in. The next photo, however, the next photo kind of worked in my favor and I kind of do like it. It gives a very grungy sort of feel to it, the way the film is and everything. Um, as you can see, some of the sun was still hitting the lens, so there was still a bit of haziness and uh, loss of contrast there, but it still looks okay. It was recoverable enough where it, it looks fine. Next is a classic still life shot. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't really that good. I don't know why, I should have worked the scene a bit more, but it is what it is. Then we move on to the scene. Not really uh, top notch. I'm really just shooting for the sake of shooting film at this point. Um, yeah. And here's this one. This one came out pretty grungy. I think I didn't expose it all that well. At the time, I was using a phone app to meter the light because I actually didn't have a battery in the FTB at the time. And I didn't think I was going to get one, but I found it to be a bit of a hassle to bring my phone out every time. There goes the light. Now this one actually turned out to be one of my favorite shots. I did think that maybe something like a 35 or a 50, it would have looked a bit better. Is I've, I did notice, especially on this photo, that there is quite a bit of distortion on the 28 millimeter. Now the reason why I even got the 28 millimeter is because I wanted to test out the focal length, um, not just for film, but for my Canon R6, I really want the 28 mil pancake. And I think after using this, I do want one still because of the street photography that I like to do where I get a little bit closer and I feel like the 28 mil because it's compact, I will use it quite a bit and it'll just be nice to have a lot a, a really light pancake lens, which the RF mount doesn't really have much of. Now I come across this little construction area and decided to take a couple frames here. Didn't know what I was doing. I just kind of liked the little pops of colors that the, the cones were giving the orange and the uh and the barriers and stuff they were giving some nice oranges sort of things but honestly i couldn't work out how to shoot it but i just shot it anyway oh yeah here's a lambo yep i just seen it and took a photo of it anyway this scene here i did take it with my r6 as well uh, and converted it to black and white now the idea didn't really work the light faded off especially when i took the when I took the FTB out, the light faded off and it was giving a bit more of a better haze before when I first seen it. I even missed it on my R6 as well. Um, the light faded off really quickly in that point in time. So I still took it though. Now with these photos, I just kind of seen these kids running up with the ball and I tried to get them in the frame and I seen them running up and then the one that's behind the railing slowed down. So I kind of, I was trying to get them to be both cleared and the ball in the frame too. So you can kind of give the, get the context of what was happening. They were running to get the ball, but it all didn't really line up well. And I wasted two shots. That's okay. This shot, just a look up shot. Nothing really crazy. I did want to test the, um, the ability to meter, like spot meter something on my phone. And it worked out pretty well. It metered pretty well for that building because that building was very well lit. So there's that. Here's a photo of Mark. I was just showing him something and I accidentally took a photo of him. Kind of vibe. Here's another one. Obviously you can see that I'm trying to do some sort of street photography with it, but I think this would be a 50 millimeter type beat. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to get close to people just yet with the camera because I don't feel confident enough um, with the focusing and everything else that's mechanical about a film camera. I can't, I'm kind of taking it slower. Um, and it's, it is, has been fun though. I actually really enjoy it. So that's that. Here's a couple of shots I took that night too. And you could see the distortion in the 28 millimeter focal length, which made me realize that I really should get a 50 millimeter or something like that. Because I kind of, the main reason for the film camera was to do more like aesthetic sort of um, mundane photos and I do want it to be a bit more flatter, um, which is why I use the 50 mil when I do some like mundane stuff. I just like the flatness of it where when I'm doing street photography, I kind of want a more wider focal length 
to get more things in. Now this shot I took um, solely because I finally got the battery for the light meter and I just wanted to see how accurate it was. It's accurate enough, but I think there was a bit of haze on the lens. I do have this, I think it's a UV filter, I'm not really sure. It came with the lens and the lens didn't have a lens cap, so I keep it on there, but it gets smudgy very quickly. And I feel like that haziness was because of that. But I mean, it looks kind of cool. It's kind of dreamy. I wish there was more of a fun thing outside, like a, a city skyline or something like that. But I digress. And now we're coming into our final four frames, which is basically burner frames. Because after I took these shots, I went and got these developed. These were shot over a course of a couple weeks and uh, it was just basically me testing out how film photography works. So here's a couple of photos of Maya, the cat. It's very vibey. And this photo I took just outside, really weird. I don't know what happened here. I don't think I cranked it right, but I actually took another photo before that. Oh, actually, no, it was after that, which at the bottom of the frame, you can see half of it there. I don't know what happened, but the way it blends in to the actual photo that I'm that we're looking at is kind of cool. And I don't know if I like it or not. I don't mind the colors of this. And yeah, it came out kind of weird. I don't know. Do you like it? I don't know. Anyway, the very last shot, which is another burner shot. I just like the lights and shadows here. And I took the photo. Then after that, I rewound it and uh, went on my way to get this developed and scanned. Oh, also, I forgot. I did take this photo of Mark with it too, which is actually one of my favorite photos of the whole the whole thing. It's so glowy and nostalgic looking that yet yeah, turned out to be one of my favorite photos of the whole two rolls that I took. That and the beach photo, the this one. Anyway, thank you for watching my journey on my first two rolls of film. Will I switch to film or anything? No, there is absolutely, absolutely no way. <laughs> This shit cost way too much. So it's like, what, $30 a roll and then $19 to get it developed, which if you do shoot film and that's a lot, let me know. Cause I don't know if that's a lot. I don't know if that's cheap. I don't know. This is camera house we're talking about, which is a, which is a bit of a franchise in Australia. So let me know. I don't know if that's cheap or expensive or what have you, but the closest place was camera house. Um, and I obviously want to get this video out. So maybe there's better labs that I can send it to if you do have any suggestions and you're from the Gold Coast or even just in Queensland, Australia, let me know if there's anything anywhere that I could send it to that can develop a lot more for a lot cheaper or something like that. Give me some good scans. Um, I really don't know where to look. There's not much here, apparently. Or what I can see, there's not much here, but yeah. For one roll, for, for 24 photos, I spent like $60. So it's a bit wild. I mean, two rolls developed, like bought and developed could be the, the price of an SD card and that can hold so much more photos and you can instantly do it. So definitely not switching to film. It is a bit more of a, a side, a fun thing I can do on the side. And it is very fun. Um, I love the mechanical-ness of it. Um, I like, I do like, but I do hate that I can't see the photos because maybe because, you know, with digital, I can look at my photo and go, oh, maybe I can recompose that in a different way. While with film, I'm like, yeah, that'll do. And then I just move on. But at the end of the day, it feels really fun using this, um, especially with all the clickiness, all the, all the clickety clackiness of this camera, it's so nice. It's fun to load film. It was really fun to like even guess exposures. Um, and yeah, as I said, the sounds of it, I don't know. There's something about it. There's something about it. It's like a vintage car and I love it, but I won't drive it every day, basically. I don't know how people shoot film all day, especially when the, they do street photography in New York and they shoot like three rolls a day and they don't work. I don't know how you do it. And you have a Leica M6. Like, I don't know how the hell you guys afford it. For now, the R6 is definitely my main street photography camera. This is for still life and just other fun things. And I do have another camera that uh, that's a film camera that I will probably use soon. I don't know. 
but whoa, I nearly dropped it. But currently we're at 18 photos on this one. I am making another film photography video with this, knowing the facts that I do now. Um, and my next two rolls of film are Fuji 400, Fuji Film 400. They didn't have the Ultra Max in the 36 exposure. And I kind of wanted to try something with 36 exposures rather than 24. So we're going to try that Fuji. Um, that'll be nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you don't go out and take shit photos, you'll never take any good photos. See you later.